2023 was the first year that I have gone to a fire festival in quite some time since before the pandemic. And one of those questions that I had in my mind was, can the fire festivals come back from the decline that they were on before the pandemic? And based upon what I saw this year, I think the answer is maybe. And I want to get into why that answer is complicated. Drex here from Drex Factor Poise, sharing with you the love of poise spinning and flow arts to benefit your body and brain. And today, yes, I am back on my BS with the flow festivals. And before we dive in, I just want to give a quick shout out to the friends of the channel. Big thanks to Dark Monk, Fire Mecca, Flow Fests, Flow Toys, Juggling Calling, Pyrotera Light Toys, Spin Balls, and Ultra Poi for helping to make the videos on this channel possible. You can learn more about all of these awesome companies and the work that they're doing to support flow artists like yourself by checking out the links down in the description of this video. And special thanks to the non-business friend of the channel, Becca Bekkonen. Thank you so very much for supporting my channel, my work, and my mission. So one of the reasons I was excited coming into 2023 is that for the first time since before the pandemic, I was gonna go to some fire festivals. I was really curious to see what had changed, what had stayed the same, what did people want from their events, what things were still lacking, where were public tastes at? And even though I only went to two events, I do feel like I got at least a taste of that. And in the process, I, got some pieces of feedback that I really wasn't anticipating. Right before one of these events, I had a conversation with a friend that I have known for quite some time, and in it, I wanted to pick his brain. I wanted to hear if he thought that there was a way for for-profit flow festivals to actually become sustainable and to thrive in the future. Partially, I did this because he is in a region where the flow events are publicly subsidized, and also too, you know, he has a background with some business in it and he's a smart guy. So I was really curious what he had to say. And somewhat to my surprise, his answer was that he thought it was unlikely. And the specific reason why is something that has stuck with me now for months and that I kind of want to put into words as I'm summarizing my thoughts for this year and starting to look at next year. Namely, his opinion is that flow artists by and large do not make a lot of money, which true but more specifically that he thought that efforts to try and extract value from a community that already has a low amount of capital in it was pretty much doomed to run into some big problems. And I get what he's saying, but there was something very curious to me about the way he was framing it. So that's a pretty specific turn of phrase. What exactly does it mean? Well, in the business world, usually when they say value extraction, what they mean is that the actual use value of a thing is significantly less than the perceived value of the thing. Uh, the term gets thrown around a lot when talking about the ways that different companies try and get ever more uh, dollars out of you for essentially the same product. For example, uh, recently the Beatles released a new song which really only had two living Beatles performing on it and uh, was mainly made up of outtakes and demos that the two non-surviving Beatles had contributed to, resulting in kind of a Frankenstein track that, you know, in the grand scheme of things, you could argue coasts on the brand name of the Beatles in order to get people to buy a track that, you know, might just be something that John Lennon never intended to finish and was just a throwaway that he had sitting on a tape recorder. Now, I don't think the person that I was talking to specifically meant to use that turn of phrase in that specific way. I think more what he was referring to was trying not to have artists that already don't make a whole lot of money have to pay even more for access to a service that, you know, maybe we can subsidize it so they don't have to. But the use of that turn of phrase is still something that I find very interesting because one of the biggest challenges I see in the Flow Arts Festival world is a lack of value add or value creation. And there's a tension between those two things. So do bear in mind that we are kind of distinguishing here between the perceived value of something and the actual use value of something. So for example, if somebody shows up to a flow festival and they think that they're gonna have an amazing time and they show up and it's really clickish, they feel really overwhelmed, they don't enjoy being there, and when they get home, they kind of feel like they dropped a couple hundred dollars to go participate in something that just made them feel even more alone. In which case, the use value of the thing was not very high. 
If, on the other hand, they go to a flow festival and get to hang out with all of their friends, have a great time, listen to some cool DJs, and spin fire in a way that they don't normally get to, then yeah, the use value is actually quite high. And at least in my perception, one of those things that the flow festivals have consistently been falling short on in the past decade is that they don't really innovate or add new offerings, so to speak. For all intents and purposes, it's a party that you go to and tailgate with your friends for the weekend. And there's nothing wrong with that, but at the same time, there's only so much that repeating that experience is going to appeal to people. And you either have to innovate and create something that is going to have even more use value, or you just go with the fact that you're going to have a high degree of turnover and you have to put an enormous amount of effort and resources into bringing new people through the door. So granted, this is just my perspective and it's more based on vibes than anything else, but overwhelmingly I get the feeling in the past decade that flow festivals have done neither of these two things. They have tended not to innovate or create new value and they haven't put a whole lot of effort into marketing or outreach. They haven't tried to reach beyond people that are already in the flow festival ecosystem or the flow ecosystem in general for that matter and that does kind of create a problem and inevitably means that ticket sales go down as has been the case i have a slightly different view on these things because in my mind i know tons of flow artists that will save up all year in order to get tickets to go to say a music festival or travel abroad to like costa rica or bali or what have you and going to a flow festival is just not that high a priority. Why? Because they believe that they're gonna get more value out of going to Costa Rica or going to a music festival than they will a flow festival. That is, flow festivals are putting so little of perceived value on the table that they wind up pretty low in the priority list. And rather than trying to find a way to make up that difference, in a lot of respects, it kind of feels like the festivals have just kind of seeded that ground. They've just kind of given up and said, yes, we will be second or third or fourth priority. And I think that inevitably means that attendance is going to continue to dwindle. Now, it does need to be said at this point that not all flow festivals are the same flow festival and specifically that there are a whole host of different formats, structures, and, you know, even offerings at a variety of different events that cater to different groups of people. I'm kind of talking in aggregate here rather than trying to single out any one festival as doing a particularly bad job or a particularly good job. I think that just in general, this is a problem in the industry. We've kind of accepted that we're going to play second fiddle, even to people that we should be appealing to. And if that's the case, if we're just going to seed that ground, then I'm sorry to say, but I, I think the decline of the flow festivals is just going to continue. So what's the solution? Well, some festivals, as I mentioned, have gotten themselves uh, subsidies so that they don't really need to be big successes in terms of ticket sales in order to keep operating. That is one possible solution, albeit one that I think is probably not going to scale too terribly well and may not work outside of certain regions in the country. Another option would be that if we see a lot of festivals failing, that might be an opportunity for other people to come in with new ideas and new models and see if those work. The ultimate irony in a lot of cases is that I think that very explicit in the value proposition for a lot of flow festivals is that they don't change, they don't innovate, they don't do things significantly different from year to year that creates something that people expect and anticipate, something that they kind of ground themselves in, in a lot of respects. But the flip side of that, though, is that there's only so many times people want to have the exact same experience before they start to grow tired of it and they want some kind of novelty. At a certain point, we have to decide whether it's more important to continue to sell tickets to a core group of people that never, ever, ever get tired of having the same thing or whether it's worth it to try and innovate and reach out and appeal to new groups of people as well. But what do you all think? Did you go to a flow festival this past year? And if so, did you have a good time? If you haven't been to a flow festival recently, why is that? And what could the festivals do to bring you back into the fold? Leave me a comment and please let me know.
In the meantime, this video would not be possible were it not for the awesome folks that support me over on Patreon. In particular, I would like to give a shout out to my Flow patrons who are listed on screen right now. Um, if you like videos like this, where I go into specific topics and talk about the broader flow culture, I'm glad to hear it. The way that you can support these videos and make sure there's more of them is to go sign up to support my work over on Patreon at patreon.com slash drexfactorpoi. I will include a link to it down in the description. Basically, other things that I do for income, such as teaching lessons or, say, uh, teaching my live stream classes, they're awesome, but at the same time, they take away time from creating videos like this. So if you'd like to see videos like this with better production values and more research behind them, free up the time for me to be able to do so. The more support I get on Patreon, the more I can say no to private lessons and spend more time on things like this. So go check that out, please, and thank you. And if you'd like to see more of my videos about the flow festivals and the culture around them, I will include a playlist of those down in the description as well as up on screen if you're watching on YouTube. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to get out and flow this weekend yourself, and I'll see you with a new video real soon. Peace.